Timeless UI Universe is a cutting-edge user interface designed for the worldwide telco and media industries. It's an off-the-shelf product ready for commercial deployment. Large groups of international renown are already using it and have been distributing it to millions of homes for years. Thanks to its modularity, Timeless UI Universe meets the market needs of pay TV operators, the media, and sport. It's compatible with all the latest technologies. Timeless UI Universe offers skinning capabilities to easily adapt to brand identity. It's a cross-platform UI suitable for any device. The end user benefits from an intuitive, unified, and enhanced user experience. Timeless UI Universe is designed to be easily deployed and managed, easily integrated into any existing system, configurable from any CMS or backend. It's also a powerful data-driven solution that stores and manages data about end-user activity for purposes of monitoring and reporting. Timeless UI Universe comes with the expected popular features, as well as the latest innovations, multi-profile management, recommendation, voice control, deep links using a content-centric approach, displaying the content required, whatever its source. A regularly enriched catalog of features is available, enabling the interface to be personalized. The UI can evolve over time and stay ahead of the field by always embracing the latest trends. Timeless UI Universe has been designed for the convenient use of the video content provider as well as for the pleasure of the end user. To find out more about Timeless Universe, contact us now. Hello and welcome. Yes, we're live in this session today to the HBB TV Symposium Digital Experience, the first HBB TV event after the holiday break. I hope you've had a great summer time. Today, in the next 60 minutes, we're going to give you an update on what's been happening in the HBB TV world and the world of connected TV, the latest market and industry trends and developments, all by key speakers from the industry. And uh, we are, of course, going to give you an update on the upcoming HBB TV Symposium and awards taking place in November in Paris as an in-person event. I can confirm this is going to be an in-person event, not just virtual. And nobody better than the co-host Salto can give us this update. And of course, uh, the chairman of the HBB TV Association towards the end of this session. And I can tell you already, he's got a surprise announcement for you. So something great at the end, but even better things at the beginning, because I'm now going to hand over to Emmanuel Coulon from Salto, who's the co-host of the HBB TV Symposium and Awards in Paris this year, who's going to give us a first look at this great event taking place in November. Hello, Emmanuel. 
Hello, Jorn. Thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, Emmanuel Coulon. I'm uh, hello everyone. I'm a business strategist from Salto. So I have been involved in the symposium preparation as a as Salto representative. Uh, so we are really really proud to be uh, the next symposium co-host. Uh, well, it has been a long preparation since we actually started uh, before the COVID, with an initial initial event taking place in mid 2020. So we are really looking forward to, to, to seeing this event live. Um, as you must know, quick in introduction on the co-host Salto. Uh, so Salto is the, the co-host of the symposium this year. We are a French SVOD platform co-financed by the three major French broadcasters, TF1, M6, and France Television. Uh, on our platform, we provide uh, exclusive content, never seen on TV in France, but also replays live and other content from our mother companies. Um, this year, we have successfully managed to, to, to launch Salto on an HBB TV channel. So we are very proud of it, and uh, we are looking forward to, to telling you more during the symposium. Um, we are thrilled to receive you in Paris in, uh, in November. We've worked hard to find the best area to, to host the symposium, and um, I hope you will enjoy the, the area and the surroundings as much as we did when we, we visited it. So as a conclusion, uh, I am, we are, Salto, really, really excited to meet all of you in Paris in two and a half months. And, um, and I hope you will, uh, you will enjoy it. And uh, I hope we did as a, we will as, a, as the co-host of the, of the symposium. Thanks, Emmanuel. And as you've just mentioned, it's really going to be great. That's what I feel personally. After all this time being stuck at home, doing teleconferences, video conferences, and so on, to finally be able to meet each other again in person at a great location we're going to hear more about later on in Paris, the heart of Europe, where, you know, lots of um, uh, things cross. And actually, that's been part of the birth of HBB TV, really. We'll hear more, more about that. Uh, France was right at the beginning when HBB TV was founded about 10 years ago. And so it's going to be a great um, venue also to celebrate 10 years of HBB TV, which we couldn't do last year because of obvious reasons. Um, so I'm really looking forward to meeting you and everyone else in the industry this year in Paris in November. And it's just going to be great, I'm sure. Thank you, Emmanuel. And we're Thank going to know. now. Hand over, head over to our roundtable discussion. We have four major market players with us today. I'm really happy that they've all found the time to join us. All of them uh, involved with HPB TV, and uh, they're going to tell us all about what's been going on in the market and uh, you know their views of developments and, of course, uh, what they intend to showcase in uh, Paris. They're all going to be part of the event, of course, key part of the event as uh, sponsors. and. Um, First of all, I'd like to mention the companies. They are Tivo from Italy, uh, Dot Screen from France, Eurofins from the UK, and ERT, the public broadcaster from Greece. Um, I'd like to welcome first Luca from uh, Italy, from Tivo. Hi, Luca. Maybe a few words first on you and your company. Hello, Jörn. Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me and for giving me your time to all the, all the viewers also. Um, I'm the sales and uh, marketing director of Tivu. Tivu is a, a company that is a joint venture that was born in uh, 29, so 12 years ago, uh, in order to help the uh, transition of the digital terrestrial television, uh, the first tra transition in Italy. Uh, and uh, we also launched TivuSat, a uh, satellite service that uh, is, uh, uh, I mean, um, useful for uh, the coverage of the full fo footprint of Italy with the same, uh, I, I can say not the same, but better channels uh, from uh, compared to the digital terrestrial because we have the same channels, but many, many, very many of them are in HD quality. The joint venture is between uh, uh, RAI, the public service broadcaster, Mediaset. Uh, the main commercial broadcaster and uh, team, the incumbent telco. Um, we, we, we've been working with interactivity in Italy since the beginning uh, of our life, 
uh, you might uh, remember that we have been moving from another standard to HBB TV. Uh, MHP. Some, yeah, from MHP to, to, to HBB TV uh, quite many years ago now. Uh, time has passed. And um, and we we offer many services of uh, certification to the to the full uh, industry of TV and set box makers. But I don't want to spoil everything. So <laughs> there is a video from TiVo. Do you think it's the right time to show it now, Luca? Yeah, we can show it now. Just let me comment uh, uh, just another thing. Uh, as I said, we were born when the first digital television transition for the terrestrial was uh, real and actual in Italy. Uh, today, we are uh, witnessing the second one from uh, that will be MPEG-2 to MPEG-4, and then in a second phase will be from uh, DVB-T to DVB-T2. And uh, uh, we, mm, we are uh, helping the TV broadcasters with our labels for, uh, I mean, uh, driving the people to make the right purchase. So you can launch the video now. Questo autunno parte la nuova TV. Tutti i canali del digitale terrestre passeranno alle trasmissioni in alta qualità. Se il tuo televisore riceve già i canali in HD, sei pronto a goderti lo spettacolo. Non rimanere ai box. Scegli un decoder o un televisore certificato La TV. La nuova TV è qui. Questo autunno parte in pole position. Buongiorno, salve. The, um, so thank you, thank you for, uh, for sharing it. Uh, this, this, is a, this is a spot that we have done for Discovery Channels, uh, uh, but we have the same spot that was uh, defined and done uh, and launched and broadcasted by Mediaset. We have the same for La Sette. Uh, we are working with all the, the broadcasters. I hope that also uh, Rai will launch it soon. Huh? Uh, why I was sharing this video with you is because we uh, highlight the Latibu label. Latibu label is for us the best in class certification that we can give to TV, TV makers and also set of box makers, even if the, there are a few of them that are, let's say, uh, feasible for this kind of uh, label, because this label is uh, uh, certifying the um, compatibility of the device with the TDVT2, the DVB-S2, so TVSAT, and also obviously HBBTV. So uh, this is why I was uh, being, I mean, am I writing uh, this kind of um, label and the big effort that we do every day in order to make communication around the label and to help customers to purchase the new and correct device to enjoy the free-to-air television at, at its best in the future. Thank you for this first insight, Luca. Yeah. Now over to Franz, to Stanislas, who's uh, the head of Dot Screen. A few words on your company, and I believe you've got a video as well. Hi, Jörn. Hi, everyone. Um, so actually, we share something in common with HBB TV because the, we share the same uh, birth date uh, we celebrated our 10 years uh, this year so it's been 10 years since uh, pascal hippolyte besson and i founded that screen so we're based in in paris uh, we have a secondary office in rain and some uh, uh, local offices in europe and in the us and latam uh, what, what we we do is very simple we uh, create uh, and develop uh, multi-screen video applications for whatever device, so obviously mobile, smart TV, tablet, uh, game console, set-top box, uh, any possible internet-connected devices. Um, we are 50 people, um, and we work for two types of customers. On one side, content publishers from uh, Disney in the US, HBO in Europe, Mediaset, uh, uh, and many other, including public broadcasters. And the second type of customers are uh, cable, satellite, or uh, terrestrial uh, operators. Um, 
uh, I would say that for us, HPB TV is one technology among others. You know, there are many different technologies. Um, but I think in, in the field of HPB TV, we, we may be one of the most experienced uh, developer uh, since we've been working for many years for um, Freenet in Germany, Francat in France, uh, and, and uh, others. We've worked for our friend Yanis ERT in Greece, SVT in Sweden, uh, Freesat in the UK. Uh, and I would say uh, 2021 has been a, a quite busy year uh, for our HPPTV business since we, we released uh, three major uh, projects. One was for uh, Mitele, the uh, uh, live and VOD uh, service of Mediaset in Spain that not only we released on HPB TV, but all, also on other technologies and devices such as set -top box, Fire TV, Android TV, etc. Um, the second was uh, uh, a project commissioned by Salto uh, that uh, you may know has been granted, granted a, a green light from a CSA watchdog to experiment uh, a portal uh, on the digital terrestrial. And we provided Salto with uh, the portal itself, as well as the uh, EPG. Uh, we has, and this portal was giving access to uh, our third project that uh, we launched in uh, this year was for Arte, the uh, European channel, which has always been quite uh, dynamic and active uh, and always at the forefront of any, any technology. So it's been a, a very successful HBB TV year for us uh, and I hope for others in the industry. Uh, and it's been a, an anniversary for the whole company uh, with our 10 years. Thank you. I think nothing can tell the story better than a few images. So let's show the dot screen video. No, I was over... just, no, sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. please, no, no, please go ahead. Well, I, I, was just <laughs> I was just mentioning RT, as I said, was always uh, very innovative. I think they, they really leveraged the uh, opportunities, the possibilities that HBB TV is offering, which is to bring, you know, more content to the uh, end user, to the viewer, uh, to allow for interactivity uh, and also to offer, you know, some kind of... Uh, intuitive uh, user interface for a uh, great user experience. Yes, that's how I remember it. Basically, as long as Arte, the European cultural channel, which has its roots in Germany and France, of course, exists, it's always been at the forefront of, you know, innovative technologies, trying out new things, experimenting. And, you know, I think it's a really great idea they've got there at Arte and uh, to show everyone what, what technology is capable of doing, of course, in the end, making the Fury experience a lot better. Now over to Eurofins in the UK with Ian. Ian, hi, and uh, maybe a few words on your company and its involvement with HPB TV. Hi, thanks very much, Jon. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ian Medland, and I'm the Business Development Manager for Eurofins Digital Testing. Uh, now, many of you will know Eurofins. Uh, we've been a long-time member of uh, HPB TV, uh, but possibly uh, everybody's view is quite, uh, quite restricted. Um, so I just want to give a bit of bit background about uh, Eurofins as a whole, Eurofins digital testing as a whole. So we're a, a global leader in independent quality assurance, um, testing and cybersecurity. So we, we cover a wide range of uh, QA and, uh, and the associated 
um, markets. Uh, we work in media tech, obviously, which is what everybody's uh, used to for, from the HPB perspective. But we also work with fintech, uh, with energy, uh, governmental, um, and other industries. So we, we really are a one-stop shop for all testing uh, and QA needs. Uh, in terms of geography and, and scope, uh, the, uh, the area, the, the group that people will know about is uh, the Bristol team who have been uh, working on HPB TV for, uh, for many years now. But we are also based uh, all over the UK. Uh, we have uh, places in Belgium, in the Netherlands, uh, in the US, Sweden and Hong Kong. So uh, we, we can cover many different uh, customers, uh, regardless of, uh, of their geographic region and their, um, their, their particular market area. As I say, we've been a, a long-term member of HBB TV um, since, since its uh, early days as digital TV labs. Um, so, uh, so we know what's going on. We've been helping to develop uh, and maintain the the HPB TV test um, conformance test suite, um, and we're a, we're a major provider of uh, tests into that uh, into that uh, conformance test suite. Uh, we also developed um, and we provide uh, Legada, which is the uh, the leading uh, HPB TV test harness, um, which also includes large numbers of uh, additional test materials which can be used uh, by developers um, just to just to test their device beyond the, the minimum standards. Outside of uh, Europe and, and HPB TV, uh, we're also involved in CI Plus. So we provide the, the CI Plus test suite. Um, and we also uh, are working in the US with a, a product called Arios, which is for ATSC3. So we're, we're, we're really uh, a long-term in-depth uh, developer of, uh, of test materials and, and conformance systems. We've worked with uh, many of the, uh, the re region platforms around Europe, uh, such as Freeview in the UK, but also uh, in Italy and, and in Spain. Um, helping them to to expand their test requirements beyond the uh, the minimum HPB TV conformance regime. Yeah, thanks, Ian. <laughs> the conformance regime is an important thing. Maybe we just wanted to say that because we're going to have a conformance regime special after this roundtable um, to go a bit more into detail in you know, what a conformance regime actually means and why it is important. Just to briefly sum, summarize that, I mean, on the one hand, you have got the standard, the HPB TV standard and its specification. But on the other hand, you have to make sure that this standard is properly, uh, you know, the requirements are properly met by the consumer devices. So that's not a mess ending up on the screen. It's, you know, all done properly and uh, the consumer experience is just great. And that is ensured by the uh, conformance testing. Am I right, Ian? Yeah, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell, yes. <laughs> Thanks. OK, um, let's go over to Greece now. Uh, my final speaker in this round table is Yanis from ERT, um, who's very passionate about HBB TV, such as ERT as well. Um, Maybe you can tell us a bit more about your involvement with uh, at ERT, your, your job function, and uh, ERT's um, activities with um, HPB TV. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon to, to all of you, especially to, to to you and to Stanislav, that we know personally, who have met each other a lot of times. Uh, okay, the ERT, to, to, to inform you a little bit about that, it's uh, the public broadcaster. Uh, we have about uh, three linear uh, channels, uh, one worldwide satellite, uh, 27 radio stations across the Greece area. And uh, of course, uh, we have a platform that uh, it's uh, named Airflix. I mean, based on the Netflix, but we are the Airflix. And this is the platform that is based, uh, start to, to develop based on the HPTV. The HPTV 
uh, the ART has involved in HBTP from uh, December 2017. It was the first public broadcaster in the Balkan area. Uh, we feel very excited with HBTV. So far, the, the, the TV sets and the box around uh, the, the Greek market is about, as we have measured so far, about two and a half to three million devices that are already active, or they have visited us at least one time. And uh, the HBTV, according to the other platforms, to the other applications, I mean, front end applications, especially the the Android TV, the Samsung, Tizen, and the LG, that already have, they has presence there, is the leader. I mean, the statistics at, uh, are two times or three times uh, more um, than the, pre the, the other platforms. I mean, uh, the, 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 the Greek people love the TV because and uh, because in other uh, private channels they have developed all, uh, so far HBT applications. So we start alone on, two, on December 2017, but nowadays we have at least uh, three or four private big uh, linear channels from the Greek market that, that already have developed HBTV. Of course, the IT is the leader. Uh, they have, uh, I mean, copied us what we have developed so far to, to apply to their station. And uh, we are very, very happy with HBTV because it's according our expectation regarding the statistics, regarding the, visit, the, the visitor. And of course, it was the platform that uh, gave us uh, the advantage to be the first in the market. So our plan is to, to develop to have the HBTV application, of course, to, to apply above that a lot of uh, uh, extra application like advertising, and uh, so forth. So uh, this is uh, the nutshell what we have done with HBD. Of course, I would like to remind you that uh, the, the latest HBD symposium was hosted in Athens and was funded a little by the ERT. That's all. Ah, yes. Forget, for, forget to, 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 to tell you about my position. I'm the CTO of the Greek Public Broadcaster, okay? Okay. That's all right. Thank you, um, Yanis, for this update. And I do remember well, two years ago, uh, when EIT was the co-host of the HPVTP Symposium in Athens, Greece, in 2019. So um, we're great and happy that you're uh, part of this uh, today, next this year's event, and uh, as a sponsor as well. So um, thank you very much for your support. And thanks to uh, all the other sponsors, of course, here in the round table. Um, now over to Luca from Tivu. Um, I'd like to take a quick look at the current market developments and uh, maybe you could emphasize a few things uh, that have caught your eye that you think that are currently very important and notable. And um, how is Tivu involved there? You need to unmute yourself. All right. Sorry, sorry. I, I was sure I, I pressed, but um, let's say um, we work with the, all the main TV makers. So I can I might list all all the names that are uh, really known uh, from the very known till the uh, less known uh, uh, brands uh, of TV makers, and we will continue working with them uh, in order to uh, enable and help them to produce and introduce in the market devices that are compliant to the requests and specifications uh, defined together with the broadcasters. Um, we, we as TV, we don't define the specifications. There are other associations in Italy that are working on the, 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 the real uh, writing of the specs, but we are the one in charge of the certification of them. So we work uh, with our lab and we also work with Eurofins, for example, with uh, some automated test suites that are useful for uh, the certification of the um, terrestrial services, satellite services, and also, of course, the interactive services. Interactivity uh, for us is, is, is relevant, is part of the strategy. Uh, at the moment, we as TV, uh, we do not uh, own uh, uh, very specific HBBTV services, but all the broadcasters that are uh, present in Italy and that are working uh, with interactivity. So all the main broadcasters, I can say, I can mention them, Rai, Mediaset, uh, La Sette, also Discovery, of, of course, they are, uh, they have launched and they are still investing in uh, interactive services. 
that are using the uh, most advanced profile of HBBDV. And uh, our aim is to help them to be sure that the prospect market is ready and uh, is um, compliant with their needs. Um, I don't know what can be the future in terms of uh, features because they, they they have to define it. Uh, I can I can, but I can promise that we will be ready in terms of certification. So I don't know. Okay. If it is clear. Thank you very much. We're running out of time a bit already. It says 10 minutes left, but I'm sure we're going to meet this challenge. And uh, with you, Stanislas, is next in line maybe a few words on current developments in the HPB TV or connected TV market and uh, dot screens involvement. You need to unmute yourself. I'm, I, I like everyone. <laughs> I forgot to unmute, so I won't be long. I was saying that as uh, I told you before, uh, HBB TV is one technology among many others. Uh, we should mention Android TV, which is getting momentum, RDK uh, growing uh, step by step uh, across Europe, still Tizen, WebOS, Roku. And it makes the, first of all, the knowledge and the capacity for uh, content publishers in particular to, uh, to, to get a bit confused and, and to find it difficult to establish priorities and to say, well, they have to invest and maintain their application across all those different technologies and devices. So I think what I would expect from the HBBT, HBBTV symposium, where we, of course, as every year we will have a booth, is to first demo what we've done, to, to say that there's a lot of uh, uh, comp compatibility between uh, HBBTV on one side and uh, Tizen or WebOS, and uh, our role as uh, uh, one of the other developers on the market is to make it simple and affordable for the content publishers. So that's my, my first reaction. And the second is, of course, this symposium. And the, it's always good you know, to, to know uh, what are the latest trends, uh, the figures, uh, what happened in France uh, that I mentioned with uh, Salto in particular would be interesting to, to look at and to get some uh, feedbacks. Uh, I hope more and more content publishers in, on the French market, as, as you said, was the uh, uh, with Germany, the two markets where HBBT has been uh, is born, uh, would be more aggressive in terms of uh, development. So, uh, I think you know HBBTV. If I would make it simple, uh, nothing has changed, and, and a lot have changed at the same time. <laughs> because there are new developments, but I would expect that we would talk about the same issues on the industry, which are addressable advertising, HBBTV, OPAP, etc. Yes, great outlook already uh, at some of the key topics at, of the symposium uh, conference. Ian, um, what are the most notable things you've seen happening in the market recently? Well, um, it's kind of interesting. So I, I, I would very much um, uh, mirror what uh, what Luca and Stanislav have, have already said. Um, the, the main thing that we've seen over the last couple of years is the way that the, the market has matured. Um, so we're seeing more and more manufacturers, more and more service providers coming in, possibly without um, the the large numbers of years of experience that that people like Dot Screen and, and have have behind them. Uh, this will, of course, push the market forwards. Um, but the, there's a real risk of incompatibility problems. Um, of course, it's a it, it becomes a, a many to many uh, interoperability issue. Um, and the, ultimately, obviously, it's the it's the customer experience that's that's going to um, going to suffer. Um, so, up and up until this point, we've been very much focused on conformance testing, as uh, as, as you pointed out, Jon. Um, but we need to start thinking about uh, whole system QA and and how how we can do that in a cost effective manner. Thank you. That's, that's, that's going to be the next challenge. Yes, I think that that's you've summed it up nicely. And as we all know, the more complex things get, that's the same with the HPV TV standard specifications, the more issues can potentially arise. So that's why the importance of these conformance testing and testing and conformance regimes, um, I think, it, are, are something 
we'll talk about anyway later on. And uh, just to mention that briefly now already. Yanis, um, in Greece, uh, what's what's been happening in the HPB TV world? Um, um, as I mentioned before, the, the ART was the leader in uh, that kind of technology, if I can say. And uh, it, it was very difficult from the from the beginning to, to convince uh, especially the manufacturers to to open the HBTB services or to to have in their plans for the next year models, TV sets. So, but uh, day by day, I mean, with a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, meetings with them, especially with uh, the biggest, uh, we have overcome all these uh, difficulties. And uh, after that, uh, after they, they, after we try to, 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 to after we try to, to make new, new kind of advertising messages, especially Dell banners and what is that, and a lot of that, uh, the other private sellers they start to, to look on that and uh, they have been convinced that this new technology is, 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 is came here to, but uh, is going to, to continue to, to, be, to be here. So they have developed uh, and, and uh, the private channels who have more or less two years in that uh, technical area, they have already developed SBTV applications. So the, the market's more competitive, I can say. And uh, they try to, to make the application like the, the ART. The ART. But the ART, as a public broadcaster, has not a lot of uh, needs for the advertising uh, revenues, if I can say. But other private channels, especially the one of them, they are earning a lot of money uh, based on the SPTP technology, especially Dell banner. The next step, the next step is how to to combine target advertising based on the SPTV, uh, the SPTV um, technology. So the market is, is start to to to, to be more more competitive, if I can say, and more interesting. Of course, we are try we, we continue to develop uh, in SB, in SPTV, but as Stanislav mentioned. Uh, there's no more HBTV application in that uh, ecosystem, okay? We have, as, as a public broadcaster, we have to be in Android TV, in the iOS uh, OS, Android IOSP, in the Tizen, in the WebOS, in the Roku, in whatever is that. So it's a, it's a very, very, very big effort to, to have a presence on that different ecosystem. So uh, for, for us, technologically, if I can say, if there is somewhere or develop somehow uh, one application that we can be applied to all of that the different uh, operating system and devices for us it will be very 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 good very good point to start to develop a lot of things because now we have to to, to pay for a lot of application to different devices to different updates so it's, it's not very very easy to 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 support that devices, but of course, that's it, it, it is a leader uh, based on the statistically, uh, and uh, yeah, you are continuing to develop on that. That's all. Thank you. Um, of course, development will continue on all areas. Uh, that's what it's like and what it's been like with the HPV TV standard uh, in the past 10 years since it was founded. Um, since we don't have much time left, maybe just one sentence from each one of you um, regarding the upcoming uh, HPV TV symposium and awards in November in Paris. Um, starting with you, Luca, um, what do you expect from this event and what are you going to bring to Paris? Uh, I expect finally some men shaking and uh, ice contact that I'm missing a lot. Uh, exactly. And um, and I mean, we as TV, we expect to meet uh, the, the main device makers and to make plans with them for uh, enable their devices to get the best device to get the best services in Italy with our certification labels. So if you want to do it, we are at your disposal. Lativu and Lativu 4K are the 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 brand that you need thank you stanislas paris of course the company the country you're based in anyway so what do you expect from the event this year so of course we 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 had to be there as we've been you know <laughs> always uh, uh, and the same as luca it would be good to meet face-to-face -face people we'll submit some uh, apps for the awards and we hope we could uh, win one uh, and otherwise we'll i think thanks to the demos and to the uh, sharing of knowledge and, and information we can keep you know evangelize the uh, the industry about hpb tv and make it you know even bigger thanks ian yes um definitely could be good to come blinking into the light of uh, of uh, paris um 
I'm interested to see how some of the, the newer technologies uh, like targeted advertising uh, will have been adopted. And a big shout out to the awards. There's still time to get um, get your uh, submissions in there. We, we, it would be great to see a, a good selection to choose from. Absolutely. The HPB TV awards up for entries. Uh, please submit your proposals now and uh, you could end up with a big prize in Paris at a uh, very glamorous ceremony on the first night. Um, we'll hear more about that later on. And uh, Janis, final words from you on the upcoming symposium. Uh, yeah, well, very happy to, to participate there as a sponsor. Okay, okay. Of course, we we'll like to, to meet face-to-face uh, -face a lot of uh, technology partners there. We have forget them from the Athens who have a lot of time to, to meet each other. But of course, we would like to, to see and how we can deploy uh, target advertising in HPTV. That is something that uh, we are very interesting about that and how it can be adopted by HPTV and our continuity system here. Yeah, it will be very, very interesting. But of course, we, we want to, to see uh, all the technological booth stands to see where the technology is going. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks to all the participants of this round table. Um, good luck with the preparations for Paris and uh, looking forward to seeing you all in person. Bye bye. Thank you a lot. Bye bye, guys. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay. Now for bye -bye. the next time for the next session of this. Uh, HBB TV Symposium Digital Experience. Um, as I've already mentioned, uh, there's uh, a conformance regime session going to take place at the conference. And uh, then from the testing group of the HBB TV Association is going to tell us a bit more about this important uh, panel, which is going to take up some room at the upcoming symposium. And we're now going to find out why this is the case and why this is well justified in my view. Over to you, Ben. Thank you, Jan. So we can get started. OK. Um, can I have my uh, presentation? <laughs> I didn't okay. see it. Now it's here. OK, thank you very much. Uh, OK, so uh, hello, everyone. Um, I was about to say that it's nice to see you, uh, but then I realized that I cannot. <laughs> but it's really nice to know that uh, so many people uh, have joined today's webinar. Um, my name is Van, and I work in Samsung, uh, but I am also a testing group chair. And today I'd like to talk a little about uh, the conformant regime session uh, at the symposium this year. Uh, I remember that uh, when we started to work on the agenda of this session, uh, I have asked my colleague uh, who is involved with HVB TV application development, uh, what is the biggest surprise uh, he has encountered uh, in the app production uh, process? And he told me that, um, you know what, I, I had never thought before that uh, having compelling applications is not enough to make a business and that it uh, takes more effort to make the apps work in different devices uh, than to develop the app itself. And that is true in most cases. Uh, apart from the good content, uh, satisfying user experience on all devices uh, is required to generate a convention success. And this can be only achieved uh, through comprehensive testing. Uh, so if you are an application developer uh, who is now working on commercial success of your new services, uh, or if you are a stakeholder of HBB TV deployment process uh, in countries that are now planning or reviewing uh, the conformant regimes, uh, then I believe that this session is uh, addressed to you. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, so, uh, since its first launch, uh, HBB TV now is uh, deployed in over 40 countries worldwide uh, with hundreds uh, of services that uh, can be delivered to more than 50 million of TVs. And uh, the biggest challenge uh, of the conformity is that uh, there are new services and uh, receivers coming all the time to the market. Uh, and to make life even more complicated, 
uh, the applications and receivers uh, usually have independent uh, production life cycles, uh, which means that uh, if you are going to introduce a new service, uh, then you will have to make sure that uh, it works in a really wide range of receivers uh, met by different uh, manufacturers in the last few years. And uh, therefore, uh, the objective of uh, conform and testing uh, is to ensure that uh, HBB TV devices uh, in the market uh, will be able to receive uh, both deployed and new services, and vice versa, that uh, HBB TV applications uh, will work on both available and forthcoming uh, receivers. And uh, to achieve this, uh, two key components uh, should be considered. Uh, the conformance testing and uh, interoperability testing. Uh, people sometimes make these two concepts. Uh, so to make it clear uh, what we are talking about, uh, the conformance testing uh, is a process to verify that uh, HBB TV devices uh, meet the specifications. And this can be done by testing uh, using the HBB TV test suite. And uh, I'd like to emphasize here that uh, while running and passing the test suite on receivers uh, is necessary for conformance, uh, it's not sufficient. Uh, it is because uh, even if a device has been certified with the test suite, uh, there's still no guarantee that uh, it will correctly uh, present applications uh, which use features that are not included uh, in the HBB TV specifications. And uh, for this reason, uh, applications also need to be tested uh, in parallel uh, to ensure compliance uh, with the specifications. Uh, the interoperability testing, uh, on the other hand, uh, take a different approach. Uh, while the conformance testing uh, depends only on unit tests, uh, the interoperability uh, part uh, covers uh, the testing of APIs uh, implemented in the TVs uh, in such combination that cannot be tested by a test suite. And this allows uh, testing HBB TV features uh, in the much more realistic scenarios. Uh, the interoperability testing then allows to find uh, issues that um, normally cannot be caught by units testing. And uh, it can be a great uh, driving factor uh, for the uh, development and improvement of the HVB TV uh, specifications. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so the various implementations of uh, conformant regimes in Europe, uh, depending on market characteristics, and uh, in the conformant regime sessions uh, at the symposium this year, uh, we will bring you a collection of international best practices uh, from countries uh, with extremely different approaches, uh, from national mandatory certifications uh, to no certification at all. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm curious myself, how come that HVB TV is growing so well in the countries with such different approaches? So let's see. Uh, and then you will be able to uh, participate in a roundtable uh, with stakeholders uh, of the conformant process uh, to discuss about how uh, conformant regimes uh, is organized in their countries and uh, what drives these countries uh, to their choices. Uh, in the second part of our interoperability testing, uh, you will hear from manufacturers and application developers how they address and resolve different interoperability issues. And uh, uh, you are welcome to join discussions uh, about interoperability, uh, for example, to uh, discuss the challenges uh, for manufacturers uh, with HVB TV growing segmentations, uh, or the, the influence uh, of application deployment business model on interoperability, and uh, for example, practical guide for application testing and verifications. Um, with these sessions, uh, we hope to provide useful and in-depth information to all the stakeholders uh, of the conformance process, and that uh, we can together uh, look back to what has been done so far 
and consider the action items uh, for the future. And I think that it's all uh, for today from me. Uh, please join us to share your thoughts and experiences and contribute to the evolutions of the conformant process. I'm looking forward to see you in Paris. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this first insight into part of the, um, a key part of the um, conference program of the upcoming HBB TV Symposium and uh, awards. Um, we now have the chairman of the HBB TV Association, Vincent Crivet, from us in Paris, telling us all about this great event that's coming up. And uh, he's also going to unveil a surprise for you. Vincent, over to you. Thank you very much, Jörn, and thank you very much to all the speakers, Luca, Jan, Yanis, Stanislas. I think you've given super exciting and appealing uh, teasing of all the great things which are going to happen in the symposium, and definitely it's going to be a great moment to meet everybody again. It's been a long time. Um, being a Frenchman, I'm, of course, extremely happy that we have the event in Paris. In a certain way, it's back home. And it's not only back home because um, I am from France, it's back home because, as you mentioned here, HPBTV was partly invented in France uh, simultaneously with Germany about 10 years ago. And then for a variety of reasons, HPBTV was a little bit on the back burner in France. But there is really now a revival of HPBTV, and I think it's great that we do have the symposium in Paris. Thank you very much to Salto to be the co-host. It's another interesting feature that Salto is a little bit the new kid in town in the HPBTV community. Salto is probably one of the last maybe five companies to join as members. Salto has been uh, live on the market for less than one year and already Salto is using HPB TV and Salto is co-hosting uh, the symposium in, in, in Paris so that is a very dynamic HPB TV live for Salto and thank you very much for all of that. Um, the event will be in Paris. It's very important for everybody to note that the dates have been changed a little bit for some practical reason, we had to advance the symposium by one day. So the real dates, and it's very important that everybody makes a note of that, it's going to be 24 and 25th of November. So it's uh, Wednesday and Thursday, then it means you have the whole Friday to work in Paris before you spend a nice weekend in Paris uh, on the Saturday and the Sunday. Now, Paris is a great city. We've got a number of great places and we have chosen together with Salto and the organization team, we have chosen a great place, which I personally like very much, which is the Cité Universitaire Internationale from Paris. It is a very nice beginning or mid-century campus, a lot of green, a lot of trees, a lot of gardens, a lot of very magnificent buildings. It's in a campus style on the south edge of Paris. It's a very special place where, as you can guess from the name, there are homes and dormitories and rooms for international students. So it's a very international area which has a tradition of multicultural mingling. And I like that very much because it's a nice place and the symposium is very much about mixing people from different cultures, different countries, and, and that's a great uh, coincidence, I would say. So, super nice location, probably very different from all, all, all previous location. Uh, and here are a few pictures that you can enjoy. And I'm really excited that we can be hosted there. Thank you again to Salto and the organization team for setting this uh, up together. One other very important practical note, of course, hopefully the, the worst of the COVID crisis is behind us, but nevertheless, there are some very precise COVID rules in France, in Paris, as is any other countries. And we are lucky that those rules exist that because 
thanks to these rules, the event can happen in, in person. But the very important is that everybody planning to attend to the symposium needs to get the magic European health pass, which you will have on your smartphone. There will be a QR code. And if you have the right QR code, you will be authorized to the event. If you don't have the right QR code in the past, unfortunately, you will not be authorized to access the event. And to get that pass, you can find it uh, on the internet. The link will be on the, the symposium homepage. And the obvious condition is that you have had your two shots of vaccinations or one shot plus having had COVID and having recovered or having a very recent uh, COVID test. Uh, so please be sure that you do check those box so that you can be admitted into the into the symposium. I probably have only a couple of minutes to say a few more words about the program. We'll have a great program. I think you heard from uh, from Van uh, uh, one very special and very new session about the conformance regimes, and it will occupy quite a significant amount of time in the symposium. And I'm, I'm personally very glad of that. And I would like to thank Van for organizing and leading this session. It's very important. HPB TV becomes more mature. It's been used and deployed, as we heard from the speakers, in, in more and more countries and use cases and applications. And the conformance is very important. And it's probably something that still needs to be improved. So it's very important that the community the HPB TV community will put that topic in the front light during the symposium. On top of that, we will have a session on targeted advertising. We will have a session on op-ups. And we will have the classical sessions that you are all used to. The market review, what's happening in the market, the success stories, and the state of the nation, what's happening within HPB TV and what the members and the community can expect from HPBT. You will also hear on the added value of um, modern standards like HPBT, but not only HPBT, uh, benefiting to the broadcast community. And you will also hear about ATC as another interesting standard in the TV world. So this is going to be a super exciting symposium. I'm very, very happy that we can finally hold the symposium in Paris. Again, a big thank you to the sponsors, big thank you to Salto, big thank you to the organization team. And I am really looking forward to meet and speak with everybody in Paris in, in two months and a half. Can't wait, as my kids would say. Exactly. <laughs> Same here. I can't wait to see all of you again after this long break. And uh, in Paris, I mean, there couldn't be a better place for all of us, uh, a city and country where HPB TV was once born together with Germany. Thank you to everyone. Um, part of this um, preview show of the HBB TV Symposium coming up again in November in Paris. You've seen the new dates. You have uh, now been informed exclusively by being part of this session about the venue. So you're the only ones knowing about it. And uh, once again, a big um, thanks to all of you to joining us, the panelists, the speakers, and of course, the audience. And um, I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you in Paris in November. And uh, I'll see you there. Goodbye and uh, see you then.